Delighted to welcome on a returning guest to the show. I haven't spoken to this man in some time. I spoke to Obama um, about two years ago as well. It is the Bama Bantamweight and Featherweight uh, champion. He defends his Bantamweight title against Alan Philpott right here in Dublin um, in just over a week's time. It is Mr. Tom Dukana. First of all, Tom, great to have you back on. Uh, how's all you? I believe you're in, uh, back in Paris this morning. Yeah, with pleasure. Yeah, back in Paris uh, since uh, one week. So, yeah, pleasure to do the interview as usual. Excellent stuff, Tom. We do appreciate it. Tom, um, you're back in Dublin, back to fight in Dublin. Big, big card, Bama Bellator card. Um, you must be very excited to get back over to Dublin and fight. How are you feeling coming into fight week next week? Feel amazing, feel amazing. Have a great camp uh, because of the help of Greg Jackson, Coach Week, uh, and etc. I did a perfect camp. Uh, and excited, yeah, exciting now. I put everything uh, together for that camp, for everything. I feel good, good shape. So just ready to go in the starting block. Excellent stuff. And you mentioned to me just off our air there before we came on that you've you know you've a lot going on in the background as well. Um, there's a documentary team following you around at the moment. Can you just speak a little bit about that? What's going on there? So there is a French uh, documentary society which is called uh, Bonne Pioche. Uh, they realized uh, ten years ago uh, La Marche de l'Empereur, the work of the penguins, uh, and uh, that was their big thing. They actually had uh, an Oscar in USA, so um, that was the big, uh, the big uh, stuff for, for for them at that time. Since they're one of the biggest um, documentary society in Europe, and uh, they wanted to do something on the MMA stuff, and we get in contact because we have a common friend, and with the guy uh, we get in touch, and I was a, uh, I feel I feel a uh, good energy with them. Uh, it will be a, a big documentary, like 110 minutes, I think. Nice. And, um, and yeah, that's uh, that's the thing. Uh, Good visibility for me. Uh, the documentary will be of uh, high quality because the guys are known for 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 for, for la marche de l'empereur, the work of penguins, which is a, a very good documentary. And um, yeah, good energy. I feel it good. And uh, we we have filming in uh, in Albuquerque uh, two weeks ago, and everything went uh, swell. So happy about it. When's it going to be a release date? And that because obviously we know those guys, and I think a lot of people would have seen that documentary it won Oscars. Is there going to be a release date on that? Oh, it will, it will take a little bit more. So actually, they want to do a project from uh, the beginning of my career. So I come, I, come, I basically uh, come from the north of France. We will do a focus on the north of France. This we will see. Then we will see my uh, my equilibrium kind of in uh, in Paris, uh, training etc. Et uh, they went uh, with me in uh, Albuquerque to make a focus on uh, my camp and my current life in Albuquerque. And uh, they will be there in Dublin as well. And it will be done maybe in the beginning of the next winter um, and then it should uh, should 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 go on uh, on um, Canal Plus which is one of the main yeah. channels in, in France definitely Tom Dukana the, the Oscar uh, winner <laughs> uh, I, would, I would like to maybe in a second part of life because I want to be an actor too but uh, yeah yeah we see, we see very, that, uh, very exciting times ahead um, with, with a team as big as that uh, following you around and um, documenting your life um, do you feel as though now maybe you're getting the, the recognition you deserve of you know I, know I know the French government are still opposed to mixed martial arts but do you feel maybe um, you know the people around um, the world you know and media and stuff are giving you the recognition you deserve um, yeah, I feel, like, I feel like uh, at the end of the day, if you have the skills uh, and you have the consistency, you you will have to be recognized in that world. You know, it's uh, still a new uh, it's still a new sport. Huh? But uh, I feel like the media is a big part in that business. Uh, some some people see the the, the uh, that sport like a, a sport business. I see it more as a, a business sport, even a business sport entertainment, even sport, uh, even business entertainment sports and sport. I the end. Uh, so even if your if your skills will be always recognized, you, you say a true thing that uh, MMA is still uh, is still uh, prohibited in France. It's not uh, it's not developed uh, as in uh, as in USA, uh, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but it comes, it comes step by step, step by step, and it will come. Um, it takes a long time because we know that the sports ministry is very close from the judo federation uh, elite, so um, they are like friends. So it's yeah, difficult yeah. to 
to be a part of it. Uh, um, but you know why? Uh, it will come not because of the sports philosophy. It will come because of the business interest. Yeah. Because MMA is a big stuff right now. It's uh, the globalization of MMA is a big thing. Uh, UFC uh, became the the fourth uh, sport in uh, in uh, in USA um, uh, about um, media wise. So. So yeah, it's the, the the this sport is the future. So uh, it will come uh, naturally, or by business, or by it will come. You think you you believe that it will come in France? Obviously, the government, um, again, said um, you know they're not going to sanction mixed martial arts or legalize mixed martial arts competitive events. Uh, huh? Recently, you know, a couple of months ago, I believe it was. Do you think do you think France will will eventually latch on to mixed martial arts and recognize the sport? Yeah, they will. They need a they, they need a big uh, a character. They need someone who is at UFC and has a lot of power. They need someone who is a very uh, good representative uh, of the of the MMA. Yeah, someone who, who needs to be French, obviously. And uh, and uh, and I, I will do uh, everything uh, to 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 contribute in, in that in that stuff. You know, for the moment, I have to be focused on my own career because if I if I get uh, if I if I um, if I work on it, I will lose a, a lot of time. Uh, but I'm trying to be uh, as much as I can uh, in the in the in the MMA development uh, in France. Definitely, well, you're doing a fantastic job. Talk to me about what you've done um, ahead of this fight. Obviously, Alan Philpott, a guy we know very well here from Northern Ireland, and um, we're obviously down south here in Dublin. Um, you know, have you stayed in Albuquerque the, the whole time? You just said to me there you, you had been. You've just got back over to France. You've been with Coach Wink again uh, and Greg Jackson. Is that been the primary focus, living and, and focusing and doing your work in Albuquerque and New Mexico? For the moment, the reason is that, that I always have to come back in Europe because I have to do my Bama fights. Um, so the reason is like uh, one month training in France, two months in Albuquerque, and then I come back two weeks before the fight in France. So I get a uh, I get used to the jet lag, I take care of the last details with my coach in Paris, set up the last thing. Uh, so that's pretty much the rhythm. Um, yeah, so after uh, Greg Jackson will be there at my fight uh, during the fight week, so it will be very, uh, it will be a good opportunity for me to, to work with him one more time, uh, even if it's the beginning. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much the, the, the circle and uh, what, I, what I'm doing. One month in France, be back in shape, doing my stuff in Albuquerque. Um, usually it's like two, uh, it's like a, a full two month camp. I come back here two weeks before the fight and then heading to to Dublin or Birmingham or London for the fight week. I spoke with Brandon Gibson right, recently. Obviously Brandon's one of the guys over, um, one of the top coaches in the world, one of the top striking coaches. He's over there in Albuquerque. Um, I know you work more pri 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 primarily with Mike Winkle, John, but Brandon said to me that you won't um, you know, entertain the UFC until you feel as though um, you're a world champion. You're ready to be a world champion. Is that the case with you? Is that how yeah, you feel? There's a, a very smart American expression which say um, when you're ready to be professional, you pass amateur. When you're ready to be at UFC, you pass professional. And when you're ready for the UFC title, you pass in UFC. That's uh, the long-term vision that I always have. You know, that's uh, for me the, 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 the best idea, the best plan. And, um, so it's a clean question. I feel like I should do that plan. So I will. And um, I feel, I feel, I feel... Uh, more ready and more ready right now. So we will see after the after Bama fight where I will go. You know, I will I will listen uh, Bama's offer, Bellator too, uh, the Russian people who wants to sign with me too. We'll see. How many times have you been offered a contract by the UFC? You know, it's been rumored. You know, twice, three times. Is that the case? And you've turned them down two or three times because you feel as though you're not ready, as you said, to be a world champion. Until you sign. I have a good relationship with uh, Sean Shelby, which uh, who is the the matchmaker of the lightweight, so my category featherweight and bantam weight too. Uh, it's been like uh, yeah, almost three years that we, we we are speaking right now. It's not a secret; everybody knows it. Uh, I don't want to play uh, the rumors too, but yeah, he, he offered me something, and uh, it's in the it's in the interest of everybody uh, that uh, we should wait a little bit more. So. I, I took uh, four more fights uh, with Bama this year. Uh, next week will be the fourth. After I will be free, yeah. uh, and we we will see. We will see. I can I can clearly I can clearly see now. So I'm focused on the fight. The fight is done. We will negotiate with everybody. But uh, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. 
Excellent stuff. We look forward to that. Um, so you obviously feel as though you're at that level now that you feel as though you're you can cross over and be a world champion and fight the best guys in that world. Are are you ultimately a perfectionist, Tom? Say again. Are you a perfectionist? I I think I am, and you know what? In perfectionism, you you, you can be even more perfectionism. You know, for example, each camp uh, brings me to a to a different level. Uh, I take uh, benefits and uh, from the mistakes uh, uh, from my last camp. So each time I'm, I'm I'm beginning a new camp, it's always a better one. So. Uh, and in the same time, the, 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 my body gets uh, stronger, older, you know, more efficient, uh, and you capitalize off uh, the, the mistakes you, you did in the in the in the previous fight. So you get you get better and better and better. And I feel like uh, yeah, it's uh, I feel like it's only the, the beginning. I feel like I have a potential, but I uh, I feel like one year ago I was two times less better. Two years ago I was four times less better. So if I con- if I continue developing um, in the same rhythm. Them, uh, I, I, I hope uh, reaching the, the highest level in that sport. Is that also detrimental potentially as well? That that you that you think like that that you know opportunities have come along, and you haven't taken these opportunities. Is it a risk almost? Uh, yeah, it's always a little bit risky, but it depends uh, the confidence you have in your career. It depends uh, the people you are surrounded by. Um, for me, I just feel it like that, you know, question feeling uh, one more time. I, uh, I feel, I feel stuff like that, you know. You have to be confident because some of the other people will be like, "You got a UFC shot, you have to go." Uh, I'm, I feel more like, yeah, UFC is one of is the best for the moment. It's the best, or, or from my point of view. So at, at a point, you will obviously go over there because you want to prove to yourself that you are able to beat the best guys, the best guys in that business. But you have to do it uh, with a with a, a long term vision plan. You have to do it with uh, all the tools you need. For me, the tools that I need is to be surrounded by the best. So that's why uh, I'm heading uh, each camp to um, to Albuquerque. Yeah. So I need to be fixed first. Uh, I'm fixed right now because I have a visa for the USA. I can live over there. I have an apartment over there. Uh, I have everything I need in Albuquerque, which is considered as the be- one of the best camp uh, in the world because we don't want to say that's the best one actually. Um, so everything is set right now. Just just need to confirm that last fight. And after we will see, you know. Definitely. We'll talk about that last fight, Alan Philpott. Um, a young guy like yourself, but vastly experienced. I think he's been a professional Alan, since he's been seventeen. Um, he's a guy, even in his Baba tenure, he's you know he might have done things um, potentially that were a little bit immature in the past. He seems to have evolved and matured as a person and as a fighter an awful lot in the last couple of years. You know, I've spoken to Alan uh, numerous men of occasions. Uh, how do you look at Alan? Do, do you think? He's a very, very dangerous opponent. You know, we saw that fight against Regis Sugden back Obama about a year and a half ago, I believe it was. One of the best strikers, you know, uh, probably in Europe was Regis Sugden, and Alan's Philpot got the victory over him. How, how do you assess Alan as an opponent, and how dangerous is he for you? Thank you for the compliment, first, Niall. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like Alan will take his chance to get the, to get the win next week because uh, for him, I guess it would be a, a nice thing. You know, it it it, it could be his uh, UFC tickets if it's if it beats me, and it's not uh, presumptuous to tell that. Mm-hmm. Um, it will be in his. Uh, I know he's not an Irish, but it will be in his uh, country. Uh, it will be over motivated by the event because that's uh, the first time he will be in main event uh, it's a good opportunity for him to see his level uh, his level his current his current level because uh, uh, as you said uh, I am champion in two division category yeah. And I feel it will be there, you know. I feel like he's a warrior. He's uh, he's complete. He's fighting in the ground everywhere, you know, striking, wrestling. He's an opportunist. He doesn't look to have any doubts in his mind, and uh, and and I'm sure he's uh, he feels like uh, blessed to be to be at that point, and and he will uh, do everything to take um, to take uh, everything. To do the way. How do you rate him as opponent? Do, do, do you believe he's dangerous? Do you believe he's one of the more dangerous opponents you, you face in Bama? You know, we, we've seen against, um, you know, top prospects like um, Brendan Lachnan, Shea Walsh. You, you, you've, you've beaten all these guys. Where does Alan rank on that list? 
I think uh, I think uh, I fought, as you say, a lot of dangerous uh, opponent, and they all bring me uh, their own uh, their own difficulties. Brandon was tough and heavier and older. Uh, Shane Walsh was a strong opponent, very well prepared uh, in Thailand. He was very very sharp that day. Uh, Stronger than me that day too, and uh, Alan, I feel he will be he will be very prepared mentally and physically and uh, over motivated. I feel he is very creative, so he will try to do everything he, he can to to get the win. And in this kind, he's dangerous. He's dangerous in a kind that it's his opportunity. I feel like it's his opportunity to, like it is my opportunity to confirm that I uh, that I am one of the best in Europe. You know. It's his opportunity, so I take him very seriously. How crucial a factor, you know, your your speed, and, and they say speed kills, and it often does in the bantamweight division. How, how crucial is your speed going into this fight, do you believe? Speed will be uh, something very interesting in that uh, in that fight, but I uh, I have increased uh, all the factors for that fight as uh, timing and precision. My my level on the ground uh, is better too. Uh, I got some new weapons on the striking game as well, and you will see it uh, next week. Wrestling, as uh, as usual, I've been training a lot with um, with wrestlers in in USA from New Mexico. Uh, kind of guys they do wrestling their whole life, you know. So I want to get used to someone which is uh, who is very good in wrestling. So when I get to an MMA fight, the the guy can can have the same level. So I feel like I train with the the best, uh, surrounded by the best coach, uh, in a, in a good atmosphere because I I train at one uh, one thousand five hundred meters altitude, yeah. so it helps with the cardio too. Uh, Surrounded by good nutritionists, people uh, very solid around me on the emotional uh, side as on the professional side. I feel very lucky to be surrounded by uh, great people. And uh, right now, let's write uh, the history. Tom, I have to ask you this, and I know it's probably a question you're going to go, oh, you know, I always put pressure on myself. But there is a lot of eyes on you, especially over the last two years. I think it's grown and grown and grown. How, how, how does the pressure feel? Uh, on yourself because I think a lot of you know the fans in Europe uh, and in France especially um, you know a lot of the media worldwide are expecting big things from you H- how do you put that in check the first thing is that uh, I have to understand that uh, be the, the documentary the interview all the media obligations are a bit a bit part of that business so if I'm not used to it I should I should, I should better become used to it you know so that's the first thing second thing to, to, to respond to you directly it's uh, it's pressure yeah it's pressure uh, now my the, the goal is to manage that pressure you know I'm helping myself with the, the confident confident the, who comes from uh, um, training is my base. That's my basic leg. Like, yeah, there is pressure. A lot of stuff are coming. But you know what? I'm trying to um, to put that pressure in a po- in a positive energy. So I'm uh, I'm focused on making that pressure positive energy because at the end of the day, I don't risk my life in that cage. It's only uh, a way for me um, to to get a better life, to, to get a new step in my career. Uh, if it's good inside the cage, it means that uh, it, it's good outside of the cage because of the money, because of the new opportunities, because of the new negotiations uh, will happen. You know, it's, uh, you know, yeah, it's pressure. It's pressure. But I, I think I manage it well uh, using different tools like uh, hypnosis, sophrology, dialogue with uh, smart people around me, people with experience. I feel like I, uh, I take a little bit from everywhere to be the, the, the most uh, complete uh, MMA fighter inside and outside the cage, you know. So mentally, physically and psychologically too. Excellent. You seem in confident mood ahead of next week. With a win over Alan Phillip, had an impressive win. Um, you know, it's, it's obviously going to be a lot down to the way you feel, the way you think, whether you or where you want to go next. Do you think you will feel as though you want to take on the world and you're ready to take on the best in the world um, with an impressive win on Friday night? I will do everything for win because uh, as I say always you know I'm not a trash talker so I'm focused on the win I'm focused on Alan I'm focused to, to, do, to do a good uh, performance delivering a good show and uh, give people what they want you know a, a quality show um, other than that you know I'm more focused on my team you know my 
philosophical ideas from the very beginning of my career, you know, was to be happy, travel all over the world, uh, discovering new cultures, uh, being happy is the, is, the, is the main thing to me. So if one day MMA doesn't make me happy anymore, I, I will do something else, you know. So uh, I feel like, you know, that's simple, that's more simple. Like that. it's, uh, I know it's a big business, a lot of pressure, a lot of stuff. But at the end, it's, uh, it's uh, very simple. What, uh, what, uh, what are you expecting about life? Uh, what do you want to do about life? What makes you happy? Uh, what makes me happy for the moment is the, to get in the cage, uh, training, uh, trying to, to be the best, uh, trying to reach uh, the highest level. Uh, so, you know, to, to, to synthesize uh, everything. I think it's all about that, you know, simple things, you know, simple directions. Awesome stuff. Tom, it's a fight. I'm very much looking forward to it next week. I'll see you over here in Dublin. Um, it's just been a pleasure to catch up with you again. Where can the guys find you? On, uh, you're on social networks. At, uh, Tom underscore Firekid, isn't it? On Twitter. On social networks. Everywhere. Tom Firekid on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. There you go, guys. Tom, it's a real pleasure. I'll speak to you next week. A fight. Thank I can't wait you, to see. See you next week. Thank you for me.